The song is called Jesus Paid It All, and I will kind of give you the signal for when we should start singing. There is an introduction. She would come and play this piano, and the music would go down the hallway, and everybody enjoyed listening to her play the piano. We had the service for her last, uh, just a couple days ago on Friday, so, and then Albert's service is this week. More concerns. I've had additional people uh, request prayers for friends who are not feeling well, friends who are preparing for a medical procedure, and friends who are in the hospital today. So please keep all of our loved ones, family and friends, in your prayers. Let us go before the Lord in prayer.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, who is the great I Am, you are holy, faithful, and true. One day as Moses was tending his sheep, you called out to him from a burning bush. You told him to remove his sandals, but the ground on which he stood was holy ground. Gracious God, thank you for calling us into this time of worship and for making the ground on which we stand today holy ground. Lord, we praise you for the good news from Sandy and Betty Jane. Thank you for hearing our prayers for your people, for you know our needs even before we ask. We continue to pray for the healing and recovery of those not feeling well. Lastly, Lord, like you sent Moses to free the Hebrew slaves, thank you for sending us into the world to offer justice and compassion in your name. For you are the great I Am. We pray. Amen. And let us pray together as Jesus first taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We do have special music for today. Thank you, Bill, for going down, Bill Irwin went down for a visit with Mike Ryan, and they recorded our special music for today. So I'm going to play three songs that Mike recorded um, for us today. Those songs are Lift High the Cross, His Eyes on the Sparrow, and It Is Well with My Soul. So you can sing with the music if you'd like to do that.
Mike, if you're listening to the service today, thank you for blessing us with your music. Scripture reading today, my own. The scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus, beginning with chapter 3, verse 1. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not being burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him, him out of the bush. Moses, Moses. And he responded, here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of what that land, out of that land to a land broad and good, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Then God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God he has sent you. This is my name forever. And this is my title for all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 begins, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith in simplest terms is our human response to God. Most of the time we respond to God from the conviction of our hearts to those things that we cannot see. However, faith can also be defined as our response to God to those things that we do see and to those things that we do hear. Moses hears God speak to him through a burning bush. 
Moses responds in faith to the voice of God in a bush that was burning but not consumed. Here is a little information about Moses. If you have not read the Exodus story lately, or watch Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> right. Moses is a Hebrew born in ancient Egypt during the time when the Hebrew people were enslaved under the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh is the king of Egypt, and he has absolute power. To eliminate any threats to his power from the Hebrew people, the Pharaoh issued a decree for the massacre of all Hebrew-born male infants. Baby Moses escaped Pharaoh's order by being placed in a basket made out of bulrushes. With the help of some of the midwives, Moses' mother and sister devised a plan to place his basket in reeds on the river near where the daughter of Pharaoh took her bath. Their plan worked. Moses was saved by Pharaoh's daughter, nursed by his mother, and raised in Pharaoh's home. Moses grew up an Egyptian, and he became a prince of Egypt. One day while supervising his workers, Moses saw an Egyptian taskmaster hurting one of the Hebrew slaves. Moses killed the Egyptian in retaliation. He tried to hide what he did by burying the Egyptian in the sand. However, Moses' actions did not go unnoticed. Pharaoh found out what Moses had done and he issued an order to kill him. Moses escaped and he fled Egypt to Midian to the west across the Sinai Desert. For the next 40 years, Moses lived in Midian. He married, worked as a shepherd, for his father-in-law and settled down with his wife and two sons. Moses thought all of Egypt was behind him. Meanwhile in Egypt, the Pharaoh who issued the decree against Moses died and a new Pharaoh rose to power. This new Pharaoh was worse than his predecessor. He made labor conditions even harder for the Hebrew people. So God's people cry out for help, and God hears their cries. One day Moses is watching over his family's flock when he sees something unusual on the mountainside. He sees a burning bush. A bush is on fire, but it's not being burned up. Then God speaks to Moses through the burning bush. Moses, Moses, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Moses does as instructed. He removes his sandals and covers his face. This is how Moses prepares himself to be in God's presence. Now at the very beginning of our worship service here, I introduce myself, I welcome people. And just before we enter into worship, I say, at this time, let us prepare our hearts for worship. I always say that, because that's important. My words are similar, have a similar intent for you as God has for Moses. I want you and I to be prepared to be in God's presence in worship. Now I could ask you, prepare your hearts for worship by taking off your sandals, right? <laughs> but I don't do that. No. She said good. No. I do want you, however, to know that even though we walk with our shoes on, the place where we stand, the place that we are in, this is holy ground. Now there's other ways to prepare our hearts for worship. I want to tell you the way that I do. When I worked in Granville, my first church, my pastor said, this is the prayer, that we say every Sunday before we enter into worship. It's from Psalm 19. We say, may the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. That has stayed with me for years. That's what I pray before I come into worship. That prepares my heart and my attitude to be in the right place before God and before you. Sometimes when I know that I'm thinking about a message that I really want to give, I will use Jesus' prayer from the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but thy will be done. All of that's to say is that prepares us for worship. God used, God invites Moses to take off his shoes to help him prepare for the message that he is about to receive. So with his sandals removed and his face covered, Moses is prepared to receive God's message. God informs Moses about the trouble in Egypt. God has heard the cries of his people. God makes a promise to Moses to deliver the Hebrew people out of slavery and into the promised land, a land described as flowing with milk and honey. God calls Moses to fulfill this promise. God wants Moses to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. After receiving some help from God for the cause, Moses asked God some questions. Who shall I say sent me, if the people ask? God, what is your name? Our focus today is on the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God is a teaching that lifts up God as king or supreme ruler of the universe. We believe as the church that God is sovereign. God is ruler over all the world. So what name can possibly encompass all the wonder, all the glory, all the beauty, power, and majesty of God? Moses wants to know God's name to give credibility to his words. So God says to Moses, tell them, I am has sent you. God says, I am who I am. God is the great I am. I am is present tense. It's not I was. It's not I will be. It is I am right now. I am means God is always present. God is always accessible. God is in all places and in all times. God is unchangeable. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is sovereign means that God is in control and working out everything towards His will. We experienced as a world some crazy years during the pandemic. I was in healthcare at hospice, and we were the rules that we had to follow were changing every day. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. It was kind of an anxious time. And a person said to me, everything is going to be okay. God is still on the throne. I am is the name God tells Moses to share with the Hebrew people. Today, God is still on the throne. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Other writers express their understanding of the sovereignty of God in these ways. Psalm 103 says, God has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. The book of Daniel has many references to the sovereignty of God. He hear these words from King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 4. 
When that period was over, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored the One who lives forever. For His sovereignty is an everlasting sovereignty, and His kingdom endures from generation to generation. King David recognized the sovereignty of God in 1 Chronicles 29. That says, Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Other titles throughout the Bible which lift up the sovereignty of God include Lord God, God Most High, Almighty God. If you begin your prayer by addressing God as Almighty God, you are expressing your faith in the sovereignty of God. Sometimes we need to do that in our prayers, especially when the world seems so out of control. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, hear our prayers. Some customary Jewish prayers begin, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. This prayer too begins by recognizing the sovereignty of God. The Apostle Paul praises the sovereignty of God in his letter to Timothy. God will bring about at the right time he who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. This is Jesus Christ. The earliest confession of the sovereignty of Christ is found in Romans 10, which says, Jesus is Lord. Every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer, we lift up the sovereignty of God at the end of the prayer when we pray, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the doxological praise for the sovereignty of God. So God tells Moses, I am who I am. Tell them, I am has sent you. God is sovereign. God rules over the world with love, justice, and mercy. God does this through us, his people. An important part of the teaching on the sovereignty of God is our responsibility under God's sovereign rule to obey God's word. God's benevolence towards us requires our obedience to Him. God's sovereignty over the world requires the faithful response of God's people. God, who is the great I Am, sends Moses back to Egypt to deliver God's people out of slavery. With some reluctance, Moses agrees. He follows God's call. Likewise, it is the responsibility of the church to honor God's sovereignty over heaven and earth by following His greatest commandments. We are to love God with all of our heart, and with all of our mind, and with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Our next song is called Nearer My God to Thee. It's 426. There is an introduction.
offering at the conclusion of the service in the back of the chapel. I thank God for all the ways that you give back to God here at Springfield Masonic Community. But let us praise God by singing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures near below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Receive your blessing from the book of Hebrews. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks.